Hello, I'm Miss Tucker, and in today's video, we're going to learn all about the importance of water in biological systems. Uh, I chose to use this photo because you can see all three different phases of matter um, in one photo. You've got solid water, also known as ice. You've got liquid water, which is probably the form that you think about most often. And then you've got uh, gaseous water or water vapor. So the cool thing about Earth and how close it is to um, the surface of the sun, it's not too far, not too close, is that it allows water to exist in all three phases simultaneously. Um, so you remember from video the other day that um, when we use molecular models, which we will use these in class, uh, that oxygen is represented by the color red and that hydrogen is represented by the color white. So that's why we've got um, these guys up here as well. That's like a molecular model of what water looks like. And we write water um, in the chemistry world like this. This is actually a little bit of a typo. We write it H2O and that just means that my molecule has two hydrogens and the one is implied but I only have one oxygen so you can see in that particular case um, that there's two hydrogens and one oxygen. Uh, water is a polar covalent bond so the bonds that are occurring between the hydrogen and oxygen on either side is a polar covalent bond. We'll talk about what polar means in a minute uh, but covalent just means that uh, the atoms are sharing electrons. So the electrons are shared between atoms, which means that the electrons spend some of their time around hydrogen and some around oxygen because electrons orbit around the nucleus, as I'm sure you remember. Um, what that means is that water is a polar molecule. And that's actually pretty important. Um, water overall, uh, because it's polar, has very particular properties which, you know, kind of make it essential for our life on earth and I mean it, has, it, 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 it it's all sorts of cool stuff going on with water because it is a polar molecule. Now you might be asking yourself Miss Tucker what does it mean to be polar and you're in luck because I'm about to explain it to you. Uh, here you've got a diagram you'll remember from the other day that oxygen likes to make two bonds and hydrogen can make one bond. So when you look at this, uh, you can see that each of the atoms is um, happy, if you will. Um, hydrogen's made one bond with oxygen, this hydrogen made, has made one bond with this oxygen, and oxygen's actually made these two bonds. Now, when a chemical bond forms, um, there's stuff going on with the electrons, as we mentioned in a previous video. And those electrons are now, instead of just orbiting around hydrogen or orbiting around oxygen, both of these electrons are going to orbit around hydrogen and oxygen. The difference is that oxygen, I'm sure you remember, oxygen loves, loves electrons, loves electrons and is very stingy with them. So these electrons don't spend equal amounts of time around hydrogen and around oxygen. They actually spend more time around oxygen. So these electrons from this bond spend more time around oxygen. Electrons have a negative charge, so that makes this side of the molecule more negative than the other side. On this side is going to be more positive compared to this side. So that's just what it means is something with opposite ends. And in the case of water, you have a positive side over here and a negative side over here. Um, that polar can mean anything. You know, the Earth has poles, North and, uh, sorry, uh, uh, the North Pole and the South Pole. Uh, magnets have opposite poles, so, you know, a positive pole and a negative pole. And what happens that uh, this creates a, a phenomenon called hydrogen bonding. And hydrogen bonding is a bonding that occurs between the positive sides of one molecule of water and the negative side of another. So we could go through and fill all of this in. Hydrogen's on the positive side, oxygen's on the negative side. So that's what we get. We get this attraction of these molecules to one another. Now, a hydrogen bond isn't the same kind of bond that, like we see, would see inside of a water molecule. A hydrogen bond is more of an attraction 
right? So water is very attracted. Water thinks it's really hot. So water is really attracted to itself. So when you draw an actual chemical bond, if I were going to draw the bond for water, I would actually draw a line between these to represent a chemical bond taking place. Those electrons are being shared between each of these atoms. Uh, with water, with a hydrogen bond, it's not an actual chemical bond because I can heat this up or uh, cool it down. It's, it's much easier to break a hydrogen bond than it is to break a chemical bond and undo swapping or switching of electrons. Um, hydrogen bonding is going to occur any time hydrogen is bonded to oxygen or nitrogen. Nitrogen and oxygen both love electrons, oxygen a little bit more. So you're always going to have a negative side over here and a positive side over here. So when this happens, you see some interesting things taking place. And you can actually, and we're going to in class, classify substances based on whether or not they're polar. Um, some cool, other cool stuff about water. I mean, I know you guys are super jazzed as it is right now. Uh, one of the things that's cool about water is a property called surface tension. And surface tension is caused by hydrogen bonds. It's caused by H bonds. And you've seen this. This is a spider, but you've seen all sorts of water striders and things. Um, because the molecules of water are so attracted to one another, they kind of create this like, chemical skin, if you will, and things that are really light um, can actually walk on the surface of water. And if you've ever done that experiment where you put a bunch of drops on a penny, which we may do in class, you can, you know, you get a lot of water on that penny before it actually breaks and spills over, and that's because water is so attracted to itself. Water being attracted to itself um, is called cohesion. So anytime a substance is really attracted to itself, it's called cohesion. Um, when water is attracted to other things, like the sides of this glass uh, graduated cylinder, do uh, you guys remember what this is called? It's called a meniscus. And that occurs because water is attracted to itself, but it's also attracted to this other substance. So that is called co, oh, nope, sorry, that's wrong. It's adhesion, adhesion. I already told you what cohesion was. Adhesion. So when water is attracted to itself, it's cohesion. When water is attracted to other things, it's called adhesion. Those are all all of these properties, so surface tension, adhesion, those are all caused by hydrogen bonds. Another cool thing about water, water has a very high specific heat. High specific heat. And basically, a specific heat, I can tell you the science definition, it's the heat of a substance needed to change the temperature, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't matter. Basically, what it means is how much energy can that stuff absorb before it changes uh, temperature. Water can absorb a lot of energy and not change its temperature at all, which is actually pretty important. Um, it's one of the reasons it takes forever, you know, seeming forever water to boil. Uh, you guys know that water boils at 100 degrees uh, Celsius, and that you're putting in a lot of it. Like it's getting pretty hot before water will actually evaporate once it starts to boil. That's why it takes forever. Or it seems like it takes forever. Another cool thing um, about all the oceans is that the oceans absorb a lot of the energy that comes in from the sun um, and helps to kind of regulate uh, the climate um, of the earth. So I like sea turtles, uh, and I, I mean, who doesn't like sea turtles? They're amazing. Um, but yeah, water's got a high specific heat, which helps uh, to regulate. I'm going to draw this little arrow up here, and this helps regulate the uh, temperature of the earth. So cool things to note, water has lots of surface tension created by high hydrogen bonds. Um, it's attracted to itself, which is cohesion. And when you stick to other things, 
and causes this meniscus to form, meniscus, then that's called adhesion. And water also has high specific heat, which is why it takes forever for water to boil. And one of the reasons that uh, the climate on our planet is consistent is because the, the, the uh, ocean absorbs a lot of the energy from the sun. Okay, now to wrap it up, some important terms that you've noticed, um, and you've already taken a few of the quizzes, so you'll know that these will be um, in the quiz that you're talking about. Uh, cohesion, surface tension, adhesion, specific heat. A couple that you hadn't seen before. Hydrophilic, so hydrophilic, hydrophile. Hydro means water, and philic or file means loving, right? So hydrophilic is water loving. Um, that's also substances that are polar. So if a substance is polar, that means that it'll mix great with water. Um, if it's not, it's called hydrophobic. So water fearing. I'm not going to rewrite that out. But you'll know these. So if something is nonpolar, um, then it's not going to mix with water. Um, and if it's hydrophilic, then it will mix with water. So a good example of something that does not mix with water would be oil. Oil and water do not mix, and that is because um, oil is a nonpolar substance. There's not a lot of oxygen and hydrogen bonds in fats and oils, so they do not mix with water very readily. And we're actually going to do a lab um, where we talk about um, how to decide if something is polar or nonpolar and go through that. And of course, hydrogen bonding, um, you know, hydrogen bonding uh, creates surface tension, um, it makes water really attracted to itself. It makes water really attracted to other things like glass, and it uh, confers that property of really high specific heat. So water has a really high specific heat, which allows it to absorb lots of energy and not change temperature. So that is the end of the lecture today. Uh, if you do have any questions, go ahead and jot those down, and we can talk about them in class tomorrow. Otherwise, make sure you take your QUIA quiz, and um, I will see you very soon.